live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE, covering IBM Think 2019. Brought to you by IBM. Hello everyone, welcome back to the live coverage here in Moscone North in San Francisco for IBM Think. This is theCUBE's coverage. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. I've got two great guests here, Carlos Gavala, Gavala, Chief Data Officer, Claro Columbia, and Carlos Apagasi. Apagasi, Apagasi. yeah, good. <laughs> Engagement good. Manager, IBM's Data Science Elite Team, a customer of IBM, conversation around data science. Welcome to theCUBE, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having us. All right, so we're Thank here, the, street, the streets are shut down, um, AI anywhere is a big theme, multi-cloud, but it's all about the data everywhere. People are trying to put end-to-end -end solutions together to solve real business problems. Data is at the heart of all this. Moving data around from cloud to cloud, using AI and technology to get insights out of that. So take a minute to explain your situation, what you guys are trying to do. Okay, okay, perfect. Um, right now we're working a, a lot about the business thing because we need to use the machine learning models or all the artificial intelligence to, to take best decisions for the company. Uh, we were working with Carlo in a short model in order to know how, how can we avoid the customers to leave the company. Because for us it's very important to, to maintain our, our customer to, to know how the, how our, how the behavior is, is from them. Um, the artificial intelligence is, is, is an excellent way to do it. That we have a lot of challenge uh, about that because you know we have a lot of data, different systems uh, that, that are running the data. We need, it, we, we need to put all the information together to run, them, to run the models. The, the lead team that Carlo is leading right now is helping to us a lot because we, we, we know how to handle that, we know how to clean the data, we need how to do the right governance for the data and the IBM equity is very compromised with us in order, in order to do that. Uh, Sefi, that is one of the engineers that is very close to <laughs> us right now, she was working a lot with my team in order to, to run the models using uh, she was doing a lot of programming over Python, and right now we are trying to, to do it in over the Hadoop system, running Spark, and and that is the 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 good way that we are we are thinking that is going to get the gold for us. We we need to maintain our customers. So you guys are the largest telecommunications piece, Claro, in Mexico for voice and home services. Is that yeah. the segments you guys are targeting? We, yeah, and yeah. Just um, scope size of how big is that? Uh, claro is the largest company in Colombia for telecommunication. We have uh, maybe 30 million customers in Colombia, more than 50% of the market market share. Also, uh, we have many, um, maybe 2.5 millions of homes in Colombia. That is more than the 50% of the customers for home services. And and you know that is a big challenge for us because the competitors are all the time trying to to take our customers. And, and the churn model helped to us to, to how to avoid that and, and, and how, to, how to do the artificial intelligence to do it. Machine learning is, is a very good way to do that. So a classic problem in telecommunications is churn, yeah, yeah. right? So it's a data problem. Yeah. Right, so how did it all come about? So these guys so, came to you and Yeah, they, they, help? they came to us, we got together, we talked about the problem and, and churn was at the top. Right, uh, these guys have a ton of data. So what we did is the team got together. We have, really the way the Data Science Elite team works is we really help clients in three areas. It's all about the right skills, the right people, uh, the right tools, and then the right process. So we put together a team, we put together some agile approaches on what we're going to do. Um, and then we started by spinning up an environment. Um, we took some data in, we took their, and it was a lot of data, it was terabytes of data. We took their user data, we took their um, use, the user's usage data, which is like the, how many texts, cell phone, and then billing data. We pulled all that together in the environment, then the data scientists alongside with Carlos's team um, really worked on the problem. And they, they addressed it with uh, you know, machine learning, obviously, target and churn. Um, they tried a variety of models, but XGBoost ended up being one of the better approaches. Um, and they, they came up with pretty good accuracy, about 90, 92%. Um, precision on the on the yeah. model. So I'm predicting. I'm um, predicting yeah. churn. Yeah. churn. Yeah. And, and so, what did you do with that data? Oh, that, that is, that is a, a very good question because the company is is preparing to to handle that. I, I have a funny history. I say to to the to the business people, okay, these customers are going to leave the company, 
And I forget about that. <laughs> and two months later, I was asking, OK, what, what happened? They say, OK, your model is very good. All the customers <laughs> go. <laughs> oh my god, what is happening with, with that? They, they were not working with the, with the information. That is the reason that we are thinking that the good way is to think from the right to the left, because which is the, which is the purpose? The purpose is to, to maintain our, our customers. And in, and in that case, we lose 50,000 customers because we didn't do nothing. We are, we are closing the circle. We are taking care about that. Uh, prescriptive models could help to us to, to do it. And uh, OK, if maybe that is an invoice problem. We need to correct them to fix the problem in order to, to, to avoid that. But the first, the first part is to, to predict, to get a score for the churn and to handle that with the, with the people. Obviously, uh, working also at the root cause analysis because we, we need to churn, we, we, need to, we need to fix from the root. Carlos, talk, walk us through the scope of like just the project because this is a concern we see in the industry. I got a lot of data, how do I attack it? What's the scope? Do you just come in and ingest it into a data lake? Um, how do you get to the value, these insights quickly because obviously they're starving for yeah. insights. What, what, take us through that quick process. Well, you know, every, every problem's a little different. We help hundreds of clients in different ways, but this particular problem, it was a big data problem because we knew we had a lot of data. They had a Hadoop environment, but some of the data wasn't there. So what we did was is we, we spun up a separate environment. We pulled some of the big data in there. We also pulled some of the other data together, um, and, and we started to do our analysis on that kind of separately in the cloud. Uh, which was a little different, um, but, but we're working now to push that down into their Hadoop data lake because not all the data is there, but some of the data is there and we want to use some of that compute. So you have to almost do an audit almost, figure out where you want to, what you want to pull in first. Absolutely. Tie it to the business. On yeah. the business side, what were you guys like? Waiting for the answers or <laughs> what was some of the, um, on your side of the process, how did it go down? Um, uh, thinking about, about business, um, we were talking a little bit about, about that, about the architecture to, to handle that. Uh, ICP for data, we think that is a very good solution for that because we need infrastructure to, to, to help us in order to, to, to get the, the answers. Because finally we have a, a question, we have a question why, why the customers are leaving us. And, and the answer is the data. And the data handling in a good, in a good way with governance, with data cleaning, with the right models to, to do that. And right now, our concern is business action and business offer, yeah. because because the the solution for the company is that we obviously new products that are coming from the data. So Carl, ten years ago, you, you probably didn't have a Hadoop cluster to solve this problem. And the data was maybe maybe it was in a data warehouse, or maybe it wasn't. Um, and you probably weren't a chief data officer back then. You know that role kind of didn't exist. So a yeah. lot has changed. In, yeah. in the last 10 years. My question is, do you, first of all, I'd be interested in your comment on that, but then do you see a point at which you can now take remedial action or maybe even automate some of that remedial action using machine intelligence and that data, and cloud or however else you do it, to actually take action on behalf of the brand bef before humans or without even human involvement? Do you foresee a day? Yeah. Um, so, just a comment on your Please. thought about the times. You know, I've been doing technology for 20 something years and you know, data science is something that's been around but it's kind of evolved in software development. My thought is, you know, we have these roles of data scientists but um, a lot of the feature engineering, data prep does require you know, traditional people that were DBAs and now data engineers and variety of skills come together and that's what we try to do in every project, uh -huh. just to add to that comment. Um, as far as predicting ahead of time, like, I think you're trying to say what data, help me understand your question. So you've got 93% accuracy, okay? Yep. Mm -hmm. So I presume you take that, you give it to the business, business says, okay, let's maybe you know, reach out to them, maybe do a little incentive, or you know, what kind of action, can the machines take action on behalf of your brand? Do you foresee a day ah, where ah, that okay. can happen? Yeah, so the, my thought is, for, for, for Claro, Colombia, and Carlos, but, but obviously this is, to me, remain, is the predictive models we built will obviously be deployed and then it would interact with their digital mobile application. So in real time, it'll react for the customers. And then obviously, you know, you want to make sure that uh, Claro and, and, and company trust that and it's making accurate predictions. And that's where a lot more, you know, we have to do some model uh, validation and, 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 and evaluation of, of that so they can begin to trust those predictions. 
I think is, is, is where we're, what guys, you're at. Yeah. I want to get your thoughts on this because you're doing a lot of learnings here. So can you guys each take a minute and explain the key learnings from this? As you go through the process, certainly on the business side, there's a big imperative to do this. You want to have a business outcome that keeps the users there. But what did you learn? What were some of the learnings you guys got <laughs> from the project? Um, the, the most important learning yeah. from, from the company that was cleaning the data. That, that sounds funny, <laughs> but we, we say in analysis, uh, garbage in, garbage out. And, and that was very, very, very important for us. That was one of, our, of the things that we learned, that we need to, to put cleaning data over the system. Uh, also, the governance, many people forget about the governance, the governance of the data. And uh, right now we're working again with IBM in order to put a governance tool. So data quality problem. Yeah, and, data quality. And, and, and do you report in to like a COO or the C CIO, you're a peer of the CIO? Uh, How does it okay, that, that, is, is, uh, that is another funny history because, mm -hmm. because the, the, company, the company is, uh, right now I am working for planning. Yes, it's, 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 it's strange, but we're working for planning for the company. For business planning. Yeah, for business yeah. planning. I, I was coming for an engineer, engineering, and, and right now I'm working for planning and trying to make money for the company. And you know, that is an engineer thinking how to get more money for the company. Uh, I, I was talking about some, some kind of uh, uh, analytics that is geospatial analytics, and I was using that in the engineer to know how the network is handling how the quality of the network, and right now I'm using the same software, the same knowledge, to know which is the better points to do sales. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's a good combination. But finally, I'm working around for planning, and my boss, uh, the planning the planning chief, is working for the CEO. And I heard about different organizations, somebody is in financial, the CDO is in financial, or the CDO for IT, uh, it's, it's different. That depends on the company. Right now, I'm working for planning, uh, how to handle the things, how to make more money for the company, how to, how to handle the churn, and, and it's, it's interesting because all the knowledge that I have from engineering is, is perfect to do it. Well, I would argue that's the job of a CDO is to figure out how to make money with data or save money, right? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So number one, anyway, start there. <laughs> yeah, the thing yeah. we always talk about is, is, is really proven value. It starts with that use case, identify where the real value is, and then we, then we can, you know, the technology can come and the, and the development can work after that. So I, I agree with 100%. Carlos, across the thanks board. thanks for coming in. Largest telecommunications in Colombia, great, great customer reference. Carlo, take a minute to explain real quick, get a plug in for your data science elite team. What do you guys do? How do you engage? What are some of the projects you work on? Right, yeah, so we're a team of about 100 data scientists worldwide. Um, we work side by side with clients, um, and, and our job is to really understand the problem from end to end and help in, in all areas, from skills, tools, yeah. and technique. And we go and prototype in a three agile sprints. We use an agile methodology uh, about six to eight weeks and we tend to develop a real, we call it a proof of value. It's, it's, it's not a MVP just yet or, or POC, but at the end of the day, we prove out that we can get a model, we can do some prediction, we get a certain accuracy, and it's going to add value to the you guys just it's, jump not right. a, it's not a freebie, uh, right? It actually oh, is. Sorry, I'm sorry, it's not a four paid service, it's a freebie, right? Yeah, it's no cost. But you yeah. got to you got We don't be, like to use free, but that's But you got to be interesting, <laughs> right, yeah, sure. It's a good lead. We, we don't charge. <laughs> but, we don't charge, yes. But, but it's something that clients can take advantage of if they're yeah. they got a, a yeah. interesting problem and yep. they're potentially going to do some business with If you're the largest Absolutely. telecommunication yeah. provider in a country, get a freebie and then yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the key is you guys dig in you guys we dig, dig in. in it's practitioners yeah. real practitioners yeah. with the right skills yeah. working on a problem right. and, and by ball. the way uh, Claro Columbia's team uh, they were amazing in, in Colombia we, we had a really good time six to eight weeks working on it you know a problem and those guys all, all loved it too yeah. they were Right, they Thank were you. before they knew it. They were coding in Python and R, and they already knew a lot of this stuff. But they're digging in with the team, and, and it came well together. This is the secret to modernization of digital transformation: yeah. is having the sales process is getting co-creating together. Absolutely, you guys do a great right. job. And I yeah. think this is a trend we'll see more of. Of course, the Cube is bringing you live coverage here in San Francisco at Moscone North. That's where our set is. They're shutting down the streets for IBM Think 2019 here in San Francisco. More Cube coverage after this short break. We'll be right back.